Hi, this is Mike Rogers with Xenos. Today, I'd like to talk to you about triggers and notifications. The triggers and notifications system gives you the ability to filter through your events as they come in, match those that are important to you, and then take some predefined action based on what is found. To help you get the most out of this mechanism, I'm going to go over some best practices and demonstrate how to set up a trigger notification pair. Before you begin setting up your own triggers and notifications, it helps to familiarize yourself with the documentation. The Resource Manager Administration Guide covers this in the section labeled Working with Triggers and Notifications. The latest version of the Admin Guide can always be found at docs.xenos.com. To begin, we'll need to choose an event to base our first trigger on. I've already configured a RHEL 7 host to generate a threshold violation event against its root file system component. We'll use information about this event and its device to craft our trigger criteria. Let's make our first trigger now. We'll create our trigger by clicking the plus icon at the top of the page. We'll give the trigger a meaningful name like file system threshold violation for easier management, and then click Submit. Now we can double click on the trigger name to edit the criteria. By default, a newly created trigger contains these rules. Device production state equals production. This prevents trigger evaluations from matching events for devices in maintenance, pre-production, or any other production state that isn't production. Next, the severity of the event must be either error or critical. This prevents matches against events with warning or lower severity. As our threshold violation event was a warning, we'll change this to match warning and higher. Now, let's add some additional criteria. We know that our threshold violation event is in the perf file system class, so we'll add a rule to match event classes that start with perf file system. This way we can match our event and events in any subclasses. Since we don't want to match any events that have been suppressed or that a knock operator has already manually acknowledged, we'll set a rule that status must equal new. So far, our criteria require that any event must match all of our defined rules, as indicated by this dropdown. This is the equivalent to a Boolean AND. To add some Boolean OR logic to our criteria, let's hit the branch button. This gives us the ability to define subordinate criteria and set them from all to any. If we assume that we don't want our trigger to fire for every type of device, we can set up two rules to catch the important ones. Device groups contains database and device groups contains file servers. Our event must now match the top four rules and either of the bottom two. Finally, we save our rules with submit. Before we move on to our notifications, let's cover some tips and best practices. Number one, until a trigger is enabled and paired with a notification, it doesn't actually do anything. The Zen Event Server process will still evaluate incoming events against all enabled triggers, but unless a notification points back to that trigger, nothing happens. Number two, an event can match multiple triggers. Unlike an access control list, Resource Manager keeps testing events against triggers even after it makes a match. Every incoming event is evaluated against every enabled trigger. This can be useful if you'd like an event to match multiple triggers to fire different notifications, but it's equally important to remember to avoid unwanted duplicate notifications. Number three, by default, only the first 200 configured triggers are cached by the Zen Event Server daemon. 
This caching allows trigger evaluation to be fast and lightweight, and the default limit of 200 is enough for most use cases. If you find that you need more, you can increase the limit in the zeneventserver.conf configuration file, but you may consider rewriting some triggers instead. Xenos notifications can take the form of syslog messages or SNMP traps, emails to interested parties, integrations with ticketing systems, and even automatic remediation steps. Let's start by seeing if we can't fix the problem before it gets out of hand by creating a command notification. We'll create a new notification with a plus button and, as before, give it a descriptive name. File system threshold clear space. Set the action to command and click submit. We can now double click on our newly created notification to make our edits. We'll begin by clicking enabled so that the notification is active. And then we'll add its associated trigger. Choose the previously created file system threshold violation trigger from the drop down and click add. Now we can configure the command to invoke by clicking on the content tab. We'll leave the timeout set for 60 seconds and set our command to ssh dev slash z command username at dev slash manage ip rmrf slash temp slash star. These tails expressions allow us to call configured z properties and model device attributes without specifying the values explicitly. Available tails expressions are detailed in the admin guide. Now, naturally, since you're a responsible Xenos admin, you'd never do something like a blind deletion, especially on a host that might be using those temp files. But it does make for a handy demonstration. Click Submit, and your first command notification is complete. An important concept to remember at this point is that a trigger does not need to fire off a single notification. What if our hasty and dangerous deletion doesn't solve the issue? What if our threshold event is still incrementing? We'll probably need to involve the owners of the affected device, so let's send them an email. As before, hit the plus button to make a new notification. Give it a meaningful name like file system threshold email admins leave email selected and hit submit. We double click the new notification and start editing. We'll click the enabled tick box again to make our notification live and assign our notification to the same trigger as before. However, we don't want to fire off the email at the same time as our command notification. We'll set a delay of 10 minutes 600 seconds to give us a few monitoring cycles. If the event is still incrementing after 10 minutes, the email will be sent. If clearing slash temp resolves the issue, the event will stop incrementing and no email will be sent. Let's click on content and add some additional information to our email. By default, the critical parts of the event will be inserted into the email subject line and body automatically. We can add a line like auto clearing slash temp did not resolve, please investigate, so that our admins have some extra context. This will also help you to remember which trigger is responsible for which email. Now, we have to choose who receives the email by clicking on subscribers. The drop down box allows you to pick from users that are already present in your instance by selecting one and clicking Add. You can also type directly on the white space to define an email or mailing list alias like hit Add and then Submit and our email notification is complete. I hope you found this demonstration useful 
and that it's given you some new ideas for approaching your infrastructure. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.